<clears throat> Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me. Let me just put this lower. I'm Danny, and tonight is Friday Night Live. So twice a month, I show you the card that we made at our coffee and card group, and we had one this week. Um, and this month's theme is all about pop-up or pop-out cards. So I have a class in a box once a month, and um, I basically that the theme for that is pop-up cards. So I thought I'd carry that through to the coffee and card group. Um, and this is a really fun card. It's actually designed by Susan Campfield, who um, she is an American demonstrator, I think. Evening, Debs. Hope you're well and not too tired. <laughs> um, so this is called a flying seagull card because it opens up to reveal these sort of wings and it can stand like that. And it's a real sort of fun card that these, the wings go underneath the square bit and it folds flat and then it can get into your envelope. So it is a little bit thick, so I would say you'd either have to um, spend a bit more money in the post or hand delivered, it would be perfect. So because we've also got this raised area of um, lettering here as well. So just to talk about um, copying other demonstrators, Basically, in the Stamping Up world, we are allowed to um, copy. Um, it's called casing, and casing is when we either copy and share everything um, exactly, or copy and selectively edit. So um, I've actually changed the measurements slightly so they're all in metric, and it's slightly different the way the, the square is as well. You made one the other day, Debs. Oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah, they're great. And I think they are perfect for, <clears throat> if you wanted to like, say, have a big birthday, you'd put a, a 30 or a 40, 50, whatever it is on the front. And it's a really lovely sort of card, um, sort of striking card. So um, today we're going to be learning about not just doing the card, but uh, this fun fold, but also showing you how to create this ombre effect. And this is on watercolor paper. And then it's raised up on these foam adhesive sheets. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's bought like this, you get six in a pack, and it's like a very large dimensional, but obviously bigger. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you how to to work with that because they're really sort of um, quite effective when you've got certain certain things, you know, like writing and stuff. Um, didn't change the measurements, just followed. Oh, Jan B. Yeah, there's lots of other demonstrators who are doing it, aren't they? But I originally saw it by this lady, so Jan B is very good as well. Um, so yeah, you can create, you can work in inches, which, um, but I, because I tend to work in, in um, metric, I prefer to change it um, so that I can actually, you know, demonstrate it myself. So let us begin, but just to let you know, you know, we've got the new annual catalog out this week. All of you who are regular customers, Joe, evening. Um, nice to see you. So um, I have emailed, um, I've sent out all the catalogues to everybody. I did send it out Tuesday, but I think some of you haven't received it yet. But these are, there are 16 new colours. So these are the new in colours, these five, this comes out every year. Um, and then you have got 
a colour refresh, which they don't tend to do every year. There's colour families, brights, neutrals, regals, subtles, and then they've refreshed some of them. A lot of work goes into that. They look into trends and they look into what colours are fashionable um, across the world, basically. So these are the colours they've chosen and um, it's an incredible amount of work. But what I have done with um, my customers and also if you're a demonstrator in my team, I've also given you a catalogue, even though you get one for free anyway. Um, I made you a little um, sheet of paper, card rather, that tells you all the, the colour families, the in colours, and this is actually made from the cardstock. So you can actually see and feel what it's, what it's like if you haven't got any of these um, colours or card, because you can see it in the catalogue, but to see it up close is is really nice and because we've had it all refreshed I thought I'll I will show you, I'll do it all again for you so this is what's taken my time a little bit so um, but um, hopefully you will get to that soon so the papers that I have chosen is the countryside in now this is the countryside in which I will quickly show you while people are hopping on and you can see I've already um, used a lot of them these this is the one that I'm using today these lovely bunny rabbits so I'm going to show you something to do with this you can't really see the papers in <coughs> the catalogue and I think sometimes it's nice to see it up close these got little foxes on them so cute this has got trees these have got little birds on them and all double sided so you can choose and what i would just like to show you quickly is this paper if you did get the sweet which i couldn't resist the sweet hi liz hi sue oh you're not late sue so just to say that um, the, <coughs> the embossing folder for the countryside blossoms, let me just tell you something. So this paper, you can actually get the embossing folder and it will emboss the paper. Let's see if I've got it the right way around. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether you can actually see it you could have a card front that emboss has embossed paper and that's you know that's all you need to do on a card front it's quite pretty so i can't wait to play with that at some point so yeah these papers are just lovely but then i say that to all the papers don't i i know i know Right, so um, just to show you another card I did quickly. My grandson is three next week, so I did it with the Zany Zoo papers. I thought this is a new colour, um, Lemon and Lime Twist, and I did the ombre effect with the green, which was quite nice. So same design, different papers. I think it's really quite quite cute so let's start with the water coloring um, everything will be on all the measurements the tutorial will be on my um, website you can download the website if you click it um, where I say click here it will be live at, at about quarter to nine so you can download it all the measurements are on there everything that I've used um so you can you can have a look let's take that away for a minute so water coloring so i've used army blue and knight of navy the water painters which i think i'm using the medium so the watercolor card this is shimmery white stock white stock shimmery white 
that um, I couldn't find in the actual the new catalogue to be honest so this is obviously retired but they have got fluid 100 which they had before anyway so the fluid 100 um, is a watercolour paper so they're obviously just um, uh, selling that now so I'm just using this lovely shimmery it's got a bit of glitter in it which is really nice so to get the ombre effect I've used done this before I've used my acrylic block as a sort of a palette paint palette so I put I put the ink on there the papers are lovely aren't they Joe they're sort of like a denim -y colour and they're they're really pretty so I'm going to start with the dark so with the watercolour there's a little chamber here this, this is full of water I'm going to push it here and then the water goes through you get a thicker medium and a thinner nib so I'm going to put some water on here and actually what I'm going to do first is just paint the whole thing with some water to loosen it up right. so we're going to start off the bottom you need a bit more concentrated colour then I'll just use it without the water like I am doing here so you get a darker colour it's almost like a purpley when it dries so then I'm going to get that colour out and I'm going to squeeze until it runs clear. I could use another brush but I just want to show you it's a little bit of like a pinky hue in there so then the balmy blue I'm going to use and just brush it on gently and it's this bit I want to to sort of run into each other and create that ombre effect I don't want it to do it too much too deep because obviously the the dye the colored the lettered dye is only so tall and then I'm going to get a plain one and I'm going to mix that because I want a bit of white so I just want to mix that in to get that effect so you're just sort of mixing where the colours join and that's probably enough so <clears throat> let's get this out of the way then I'm going to dry it I'm going to dry it with my heat tool otherwise if you try and die cut it now it will just work die cut properly okay, straighten it out sorry that was going in and out of shot because it's picking up the it's picking up the heat gun and trying to focus on that 
So I'll just wipe these away. Now just to show you how to use this, So these have got double-sided stickiness. So <clears throat> what I would do is cut it to shape, cut it to the shape that I've got. You can use that another time. And then stick this on. It is very sticky, and it's sticky to my fingers. So just stick this onto there. And then, right, I'm going to get rid of this. Clean that in a minute. Put that to one side. Get my nice clean paper back. So then I need my dies. So the dies are, where are the dies? Hidden somewhere. Alphabet mode dies. So this gives you numbers. It even gives you accents like if you were French it's got a little it's not an accent it's one of those things that go under the C's and I can't remember what that's called and then it's got all the letters and numbers so it's really quite useful I use this a lot so what I would do is I actually put taken them out because I knew I'd lose it. So my happy. So I have got I'm gonna pop that onto there. So I want the ombre effect. So I'm gonna position it so I get a bit of blue, a bit of middle blue and a bit of lighter blue and white. So I'll probably do that. And then Pop that there, that there, and obviously I haven't got two P's. So then to keep it in position, you could do it, if you had more time, you could do it so it's nice and straight and you could use the negative of this in another card. So I'm gonna put that in position and obviously once that's gone through the machine I'll cut it again. So I happen to have one already done. So this is already cut and that's what it looks like. So I'm going to put that to one side because we're going to use it in a while. We're going to create our card now. So let me just have a little tidy up because I can't can't see what I'm doing. So to create the card, you need two sheets of A4 cardstock and then a sheet or some of the sheet of A paper. Now obviously you've got the reverse so you can mix and match. So to start with, um, let's get my trimmer. So what I'm going to do is that the narrow end of the A4 is 21. So I'm going to turn it to the side and then going to cut at, let me have a look at my measurements, 10.5. And then 
another one exactly the same 10.5 you've then got <clears throat> a piece of this that's spare then take your second sheet and you're going to do a little square of 10.5 So 10.5 square, so keep that to one side and we're going to score these two in exactly the same way and I'm going to score with the wide part at the top, let me see, 5.5, .5. get my blade out of the way. Score it at 5.5, 10, and 16. That's one. Second one exactly the same way. 5.5, 10, and... 16. So let's put this out of the way. So you've got two pieces of card. Let me just see what you can see. Um, exactly the same. So with this one, let me just check 5.5 .5 is on the outside, the 5.5. .5. This end is five so this part is going to be this bit of the card so first of all we're going to do a mountain fold which comes up then we're going to do a valley and then another valley okay so that is what it should look like so that's that one now with this one we want a mirror image so it was like this and I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees so it's a mirror image of that so I'm going to work from the outside to the inside let me just check that that is right yes so this one has to be a mountain, mountain fold. This is a valley, and this is a valley. Okay, so what I am doing is this is going to turn out like that. The square part is going to go on the top like that, and these are in effect the wings now you can get easily muddled <laughs> like we did a little bit on <laughs> on Wednesday I did with one of them I scored it wrong so poor Sarah had to do it again so I am going to just before I forget take some tear and tape you're not going to see this so I'm going to just tape that together so I don't get muddled up. There, like that. So that is the basis, the basis of my card. So we need to decorate it first and then once we put the square piece of card on top, we can decorate it and layer it and all that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm then going to cut my DSP. I'm just going to put that to one side for a minute. Let's get the trimmer back. So my DSP, I've got the directional paper. So I want the direction to be obviously vertical, not horizontal. So I'm going to turn it round like that and my longest measurement is going to be 
on this side and that is at 10. So then I'm going to turn it back and I'm going to do two strips of five. Oops. And then two strips of four. Two strips of four and then two strips of 5.5 5.5 and 5.5 and then all you've got is a little strip left over so let me put these together and this together and that together so then you've got to think about how you would like <clears throat> to lay this out because you've got to remember that whatever papers you choose here need to complement on the outside flaps because they are going to sort of be looking closely together when you when the person opens the card I'm just going to refresh my page just in case I'm missing anything that's fine um right so what I'm going to do is those go there inside there and then I'm gonna put those two on that side probably but I'm not sure and this probably yeah I'm gonna do that so I'm just gonna quickly stick these down So are you all coronation ready? What are people up to? Has anybody got any street parties? We nearly had one. We usually do something. V day we had something and the Jubilee, yeah, the Platinum Jubilee we did something. But we haven't got one this year. I think it was sort of organised a bit late, possibly, when people had booked holiday. So I wonder if anybody is doing anything. Or are you just enjoying time off? So as you can see, you can do this with so many different different papers, like with lots of cards really, you know, just use all the papers and to use it for a male or a female, you know, there's all sorts of things you could do so then I'm ready now what I would do I've given you the measurements for the, the back I've, I've actually put my greeting for the back um, when I think Susan did hers she put her little white uh, card inside here so it's slightly different so what you all do we Joe says we have, but I'm working this week. Oh, you're working. But from home, that's not too bad. Going to make a coronation. Oh, how lovely. A flower arrangement. I have to see that. 
I'm going to craft a garden and relax. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Debs, I'm so happy for you that you're going to have a break. You work so hard. <laughs> I feel tired just looking at you. Right, so then that square bit that we cut out, the ten and a half by ten and a half, we can glue on. So that will go directly onto the front. Just need to wiggle it on. So you don't see the back pieces. There. Now I'm just going to, I don't really fold and burnish properly. I just folded, didn't I? Because I wanted to show you what we were doing. So I just burnish it a little bit. Okay, so we've got that. So we need to layer. Need to have another piece for the front, the DSP. So that'll be 10 by 10. So you're crafting in the garden or you're going to craft garden. So I want it this side I think because um, if you look at this I am going to do the little stylus shapes which is my go-to stylus shapes. Where have you gone? These are the stylus shapes. If you haven't got stylus shapes, you've got something missing in your life. These are just, I use this all the time and people who do class in a box probably know I do, <laughs> but I love them. Squares and circles with this lovely stitched or dotted edge. So you need a die of that or you can just cut a square if you haven't got them so I've already die cut that out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on like that let's oh I don't know what should I do should I do that side rabbits or that side girls Tell me. Tell me in the comments. Oh, so Carol, you're having some lunch with your sister. Oh, how lovely. Oh, we couldn't get any decent flowers today. Oh, really? There was loads in the shops today. I saw some absolutely lovely bouquets of flowers. So, while I carry on with something else, let me know, should I do this side? Or the plane side this is side A the rabbit side or side B let me know I love rabbits yes yeah, so do I it's a shame not to use that isn't it but anyway while you're doing that I'm gonna stamp try the sentiment and see which looks best okay Joe I can do that Let's try that. So I'm going to do the sentiment, which is from The Biggest Wish. Um, and I'm just going to do this birthday here. Um, photopolymer so I can see. Side A rabbits. Oh, yes, Liz. So when I'm, I'm doing it in a, a sort of a diamond shape, so if you can see this one it has to be quite low down because this is quite biggish so let me just test it okay let me just 
stand up for this. That's fine. That will do. Just clean it. And now the other tip to tell you about is when you get your when you get to your words yeah I think the bunnies as well to be honest look Debs has said it Joe has said it Liz has said it got three people saying the bunnies I think so too to be honest but let me just tell you one thing um so when you're this just comes out this just pops out so and obviously you've got the um sticky side on that side but it's covered in paper at the moment um but what i sort of look at is how do you center your writing these are very sticky and so once you you have to be absolutely sure that you're putting it on um, and sure that you're getting it right so what I've done here is happy thankfully has got five five letters in them so you've got a middle letter the middle letter is going down that part the diagonal so I'm going to start with a P and work outwards so just pops out very sticky Ooh, doesn't want to come off so take the sticky part off and then I'm looking at that I'm gonna pop that there so that's my first bit now I've got to stick the rest on because it's going to overlap the rest so what do you think yeah i think the bunnies let's do the bunnies so stick that bit on make sure the bunny rabbits are the right way around stick it on and stick this on Oops, cover that up, otherwise everything's going to stick on it. <clears throat> so then that is going to go to the edges of the DSP. So I know it's central and then I'm ready to stick, then I will work from the middle outwards. So the next one will either be the P or the A. So that needs to pop out. Stick everywhere. So then just evenly. Evenly space them as much as you can. Then I'm going to do the A. stand up from this make sure we spell it right <laughs> done that before if you're not spelling it from the beginning to the to the end it's so easy to spell it wrong Well, obviously you just have to be careful as you take it out because it could easily rip so that hasn't got the sticky on so. and the last one so with lettering I always start in the middle first 
and then work outwards and then I've got these lovely iridescent little gems just pop like in all good flower ranging you work in threes or fives don't you Joe you'll know all about this and Carol so gems I think are the same okay, let's see if that let's take this away <clears throat> right so that is it then so the tutorial will be up on my website shortly and there we go so to fold it sometimes you do get a it's a bit difficult so you've got the top bit here the top square these flaps fold together and then this bit comes out and it's like that goes into an envelope sits quite proudly on the mantelpiece when somebody has received it and I love it I've done it quite a few times now I think it's a lovely card it's it's you, you could make it bigger obviously and, and do a, um, a large card if you were doing a, a big card for somebody's birthday but I think it's just so so cute so if you want the tutorial have a look at my website um, and that's it there so the next one oh thank you Sue thank you Debs thank you everybody I think it's really lovely I, they all loved it on Wednesday as well so so the next Friday Night Live is on Friday the 19th um, this month at uh, 8 p.m. so I hope to see you then and that will be another pop-up card that is a really lovely card it's very effective not going to give away any secrets but it's a very effective card um, but it's very fairly straightforward as well so oh I completely forgot to say that if you like or comment um, until the end of Monday bank holiday you could be entered into a prize draw to win this card so thank you for watching thank you for your chatting thank you for your comments and you'll all be entered into the prize draw to win it so thank you very much for joining me and I will see you see you soon <laughs>